Hello, my name is John Punnett, partner in charge of Eisner Amper's technology and life sciences practice. Eisner Amper is proud to support PACT and this year's Capital Conference. I'm excited to welcome you to the 2020 PACT Capital Conference Day 2 of the featured company presentations for our healthcare track, The Road to the Lion's Den. Eisner Amper is proud to support this conference, and we'd like to thank all of our sponsors. This couldn't happen without them, so I hope you will learn more about them on the conference website. A special thanks must be given to the industry track vice chairs for healthcare, Kapila Ratnam, partner at New Spring Capital. For technology, Glenn Bresner, co founder and managing partner, Activate Venture Partners. And for the early stage track, Doc Pargi, SRI Capital. Thank them for all their hard work on this program. And now I'd like to introduce Richard Cohen, partner at Dwayne Morris. Thank you. Hello, I'm Rich Cohen, co head of the Emerging Business Group at Dwayne Morris. Dwayne Mars this year is happy to be the initial sponsor of entrepreneurial outreach for the PAC Capital Conference. It's a perfect fit for Dwayne Mars as we're a law firm that prides itself on providing actually practical advice to both entrepreneurs and investments at all stages. And now I'd like to introduce the sponsoring partner of the healthcare track, Dave Berkavage, assurance partner at Erickson Young. Thank you and enjoy the presentations. Hello, I'm Dave Brickavage, partner at EY and leader of our growth markets practice here in Philadelphia. We're proud to be associated with the healthcare track, and we've been proud to help companies like these through all stages of their growth for a long time. New this year, we're giving all of you the opportunity to rate our featured companies. This will help our Lions determine who will be the final three on September 24th. To access the ratings, Open the PACT Capital Conference app on your mobile device or desktop. Again, you can use your mobile phone to scan the QR code that's on the screen for quick access. Once you've logged in, the access code to join is CAPCON 2020. Again, CAPCON 2020. In the Featured Companies tab, select the company you'd like to rate and rate it from one to five stars with five as the best. You can rate as many companies as you like. We will close the rating function the week of September 14th. Again, help us guide the Lions in choosing the final three companies for the Lions Den of the PACT Capital Conference on September 24th. Today, let's get into the presentations for our group of companies, and hopefully they're on the path to the Lions Den. Avisi Technologies. Hello, my name is Ray Zhang Zhang, and I'm co-founder and CEO of Avizi Technologies. This is the Singh Center for Nanotechnology, where we manufacture our prototypes. For most of us in this call today, we're blessed with good vision, and this is how we see the world. But there are close to 4 million patients living in the U.S. today who can't see what you see because they have a disease called glaucoma. And once you have glaucoma, this is what your world becomes. Glaucoma remains the leading cause of irreversible blindness today, affecting over 80 million patients worldwide and costing the U.S. government over $2 billion annually. At a high level, what's happening in eyes with glaucoma is that aqueous humor, or this fluid that nourishes your eye tissue, isn't draining properly. It's being pent up in the anterior chamber, which puts high pressure within the globe and on the optic nerve, leading to irreversible vision loss. It's well established that lowering this eye pressure is the only modifiable risk factor for slowing the progression of glaucoma. We're working on Visiplate, which will become a leading glaucoma treatment technology. Visiplate can achieve better intraocular pressure control through our redundant multi-channel drainage design. This can result in lower intraocular pressures for patients, prolonging their vision and improving their quality of life. Visiplate can also reduce post-operative complications with our novel anti-scarring material. This can result in easier follow-up care for physicians and value added for payers. Last but not least, Visiplate has a relatively short surgery time. Less than 15 minutes per surgery can decrease the operating room cost per case. Visiplate is implanted in the subconjunctival space, which is between the conjunctiva, that thin clear layer of tissue in your eye, and the sclera, which is the thick white tissue. That pent-up aqueous humor will flow through networked microchannels onto the body of Visiplate, forming a very low and diffuse fluid pocket. From there, the fluid will be reabsorbed into surrounding tissue, thereby lowering pressure within the eye and protecting the optic nerve. Visiplate is over 20 times thinner than a human hair. 
The market for glaucoma drainage devices is rapidly growing to over $1.5 billion by 2024, and this rapid growth rate is being driven by a rapidly aging patient population with increased prevalence for glaucoma and a shift in treatment preference whereby physicians are seeking implants in surgeries as an earlier line of treatment. We leverage a novel metamaterial invented at the University of Pennsylvania. We've licensed this composition of matter patent, which has been issued and has protection to 2035, and we have several patents pending as well on various methods and devices for treating eye disease using thin films. We will pursue the 510k pathway for aqueous shunts for this Visiplate product. Our plan is to conduct a first-in-human clinical study outside of the U.S., and from there, go on to apply for an investigational device exemption in our pivotal clinical trial, which will be around 65 patients with a one-year follow-up here in the United States. And we plan to achieve our 510K approval in 2023. If we take a look at current treatments for glaucoma, it's evident that high failure rates abound, from high non-compliance with medications to high failure rates with golden standard manual surgeries and even last line of defense implants. And this is where Visiplate comes in. We want to be the permanent and go-to solution for patients who have not responded to medical therapy in order to really and truly preserve their vision permanently. Current devices have very large safety and efficacy trade-offs. Here we've plotted the competitor devices that are either on the market or pending approval. And all of them have trade-offs between either being very small and easily clogging after a few months after implantation or very large and invasive um, and yet able to reduce that intraocular pressure to the proper level. So this is where we see Visiplate being positioned as a high safety and high efficacy product for patients. We've been able to demonstrate our intraocular pressure lowering potential as well as safety through long-term studies in New Zealand white rabbits. What's key to note is that we already exceed the FDA threshold for lowering intraocular pressure beyond 20% from baseline. And in our rabbit studies, our data shows that we have 75% higher magnitude of reduction than a competitor product, as well as a longer duration of efficacy in this model. We've also seen excellent safety over six months of study. In terms of pricing, we can price um, at a range while still maintaining high gross profit margins, over 80%. And we would be able to fall within existing category one CPT codes as listed here. The ultimate goal is to sell Visiplate in bulk to hospitals and clinics in order to help patients preserve their vision. I co-founded the company while I was a student at the University of Pennsylvania, and since then have recruited an expert team in nanotechnology, fabrication, startups, manufacturing quality, as well as clinical development. We also have a strong team of advisors who are experts in ophthalmology and glaucoma surgery, as well as biocompatibility and the FDA regulatory pathway. Taking a quick look at the historic transactions that have happened in the glaucoma space, it's evident that the pivotal clinical study is a key value inflection point, and we would be open to partnering with large companies to distribute Visiplate um, later on in the future as well. Through our participation in various industry accelerators such as Johnson & Johnson J-Labs, UCSF Rosamund Innovator, and MedTech Innovator Accelerator, we've been fortunate enough to grow our strategic network. With that being said, we covered a lot of ground today as an introduction. Please reach out if you would like more information. Today, we talked about our high unmet patient need and large addressable market in the glaucoma space, how Visiplate has strong preclinical proof of concept data. We talked about our clear 510k regulatory pathway, as well as our expert team and our strong patent position. Again, if you'd like more information or would like to support us in any way, I welcome you getting in touch in my email assisted here. Thank you, and I hope to meet you soon. Biosapien. Hi, my name is Katija Ali, and I'm the CEO of Biosapien. Biosapien was first founded in 2018, approximately two years ago, and is a preclinical biotech company that's working on two novel products. The problem that we're addressing is one that's personal. So back in 2008, my dad was actually diagnosed with colorectal cancer. And in order for him to be treated, he had to go for chemotherapy. Now, during his chemotherapy trips, I would accompany him and I realized something very disturbing, which was that chemotherapy is not strong enough and smart enough to be able to differentiate between healthy cells and tumor cells. And instead, it just goes in there and destroys everything. It impacts our hair, causing hair loss. It impacts our GI lining, causing nausea and vomiting. And it impacts our immunity and therefore leads to high risk of infections, amongst other problems. This obviously trends into a poor quality of life. 
Now, from a patient's perspective, the patient also has to go and get this chemotherapy anywhere from two to three times a week, sitting at the hospital for anywhere from five to six hours, and a therapeutic range of anywhere from six to eight months. And that could go on, and it could be to a point where it doesn't even approve and you need additional cycles. And from there on, it's a never-ending cycle. The side effects alone and the costs of this alone impact the U.S. at about $4 billion per year. Now, when we looked at this market, we, we obviously know that the market is huge. Cancer impacts a lot of people. It's the second largest cause of death in the U.S. alone with 600,000 people every year and about 1.76 million that are diagnosed with it each year. From a pharmaceutical and a revenue generating perspective, it has a total worldwide revenue of $137 billion as of 200, sorry, 2018. Now, our beachhead market here at Biosapien is going to be pancreatic cancer. And the rest of the larger market we're going to conserve for 2022 and onwards. This would be breast, lung, and colorectal cancer. Taking a look at pancreatic cancer, there are about 158 people a day that are diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And if we just take a step back and look at the anatomy, which you can see on the left-hand side here, the way the pancreas is situated, it's all it's retroperitoneum, meaning that it's all the way in the back, deep inside. Um, and because of that, it's surrounded by a lot of sensitive organs and blood vessels and things of that sort. And what happens in the situations is in pancreatic cancer, often patients are not diagnosed until it's too late um, in that situation. Uh, it's stage three or four. And at that point, it, when the surgeon goes in to do the surgery, which is called the Whipple procedure, it takes anywhere from eight to nine hours and costs about 250K, they realize that they can't be taken out. And that happens to about 80% of patients. Now, my team and I, so myself, um, uh, I'm the CEO, and Ali Asker, who is the CTO of Biosapien, he has over 25 years of experience in biotech uh, with over 300 publications in 3D printing. He's the chair of drug delivery at uh, Pharmacology at Iowa, uh, along with Chris Rhodes, who also has 25 years of biotech experience and has helped put multiple products through, and our scientific advisory board members, Dr. Elena O'Reilly. We've come together to put, um, bring to you our med chip. Now our med chip and MediChip is a biodegradable implantable mesh. And really what this is, is you go ahead and you place this. So these four corners that we're seeing right here, on top of the tumor during the surgery. So they get sutured onto the side corners and as it breaks down, it releases the chemotherapy to the localized spot. So why would we choose MediChip? Because A, we provide the localized slow release of any type of small molecule. GEM and 5FU are going to be our first APIs and we'll be able to provide an enhanced therapeutic effect due to the fact that there's longer duration at the actual site uh, of the cancer. This obviously will translate into greater efficacy. Now, from a patient perspective, this improves quality of life because not only are you reducing systemic side effects, but you're also reducing the number of hospital visits that are required and the complications that therefore come from that. From a scientific perspective, we actually have a really unique molecule and uh, material, sorry, not molecule, material that differentiates from others that are in the market, such as PEG, PLA, PLGA, that are commonly used. And because of our unique uh, ability for manufacturing to, to use 3D printing, we can scale up and customize as needed. And that really brings us to the fourth point, which is that we have the ability to incorporate any type of small molecule, whether it's oncology, opioid, anti-inflammatory hormones, and be able to tune the release of that um, for drug combinations. So you can think of things like full fury or full fox and multiple other toxic combinations that are out there, we'd be able to 3D print and provide. And so, uh, in terms of our affiliations, we are backed by SOSV. We've been a part of a few programs and you can actually contact me here at kapa at biosapien.com. Thank you so much. CBI Labs. Hi, my name is Ignacio Pino. I'm the CEO of CBI Labs. I was uh, bit by the biotech bug uh, 15 years ago. I was a veterinarian in all of a sudden, a couple of losses in my family to cancer told something in my head to, you know, put some of my life science knowledge to the work of uh, working and combating some human diseases. I joined forces with Johns Hopkins scientists and we created CDI Labs. CDI is a revenue generating, cash flow positive, expanding company in the immune biomarkers, fingerprinting, 
and detections to this market. The global biomarker markers market is growing very rapidly. Almost $100 billion were spent in 2020. The problem is, even with the latest biomarker platforms, often they fail their core goal of diagnosing disease, anticipating therapeutic outcomes, or even predicting novel drug targets. That's even true for COVID, as we all know by now. Uh, CDI labs exist to create biomarkers and antibody solutions. Uh, for example, in genomics, the problem is it's blind to immune behavior. Without platforms uh, marketed through antigen, our brand, we can make we, we can provide next generation immune assays that complement the blind spot of genomics. In the imaging and proteomics field, the problem is more with the probes that you use to detect these uh, proteins and uh, We've used the same platforms uh, to solve this problem. We created Monomaps, which is a brand that is focused exclusively on creating the most accurate antibodies to all the human proteins. This is all possible because we created solutions uh, that are exclusive uh, to us, our next generation proteomic, biological, and analytical tools, and obviously they're guided by an expert team. For example, the Hue prod is the world largest collection of three-dimensionally expressed human proteins. Verskin and Hue skin are libraries that express proteins of viruses and humans in linear form. Bird is our new baby, which has a membrane proteins expressed in the right conformation so that you can do drug discovery. And we combine all these under what we call grand ceramics, where we can really give a window to the immune system. We are currently marketing our products to two brands, Antigen, which is focused on looking for biomarkers for diagnostics, uh, and also for biomarkers for predicting uh, outcome and side effects, and also for the identification of drug targets. In this category alone, in this branch, we're launching uh, around five new products uh, in the next two years uh, that are going to pile up on top of the existing uh, revenue that has already made us cash flow positive. Uh, Monomath is also a brand new line that's coming online with 2,000 uh, plus uh, detection probes that have all been characterized against the human proteome for their precision to detect their target. This will continue to grow, and this is especially important in areas like pathology. Uh, as an example, HuProt, which was our first product, uh, you know, we started selling to distributors, then we got to sell to some of our academic partners, then we started selling to pharmaceutical companies. We're cash flow positive thanks to it today. But the truth is, we've only done this with 210 customers of 4,100 in the US that we could do, going to. So as you can see, we can do we need to do more marketing. That's why we're raising some capital. Good thing is, once we get a customer, they like to stay with us. Setting 1.3% of our revenue is from recurrent customers at this moment. How will we grow in the next two to three years? By stacking. We have HuProt, which is on growth already, clear path, and to that we're adding five to six new products or even branches that are gonna stack on top of that and get us to the over the $10 million mark in two to three years. Uh, we hope this, uh, uh, will lead to uh, an exit uh, you know, around 8 to 10x. Uh, comparables uh, definitely sure us that that's possible. We're seeking right now $5 million at a pre-money of 20. Uh, we've raised 1.4 million of this Series B. Uh, this has come from Series A investors, founders, and new angel investors. And I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. We would love to have you in the CDI family. Thank you. Pep Bax. Hello, my name is Mahesh Narayanan. I'm the president and CEO of Pep Bax. I was born in India, but I moved to the United States when I was quite young 
and I lived both in the West Coast and the East Coast, and I currently reside in Philadelphia. I did my undergraduate studies at Boston University and my graduate studies at the University of Pennsylvania here in Philadelphia. When I'm not working, my passions are music, travel, photography, and food. I'm a classically trained musician, having done over 100 concerts so far. I'm also an avid travel photographer, having traveled around the world, and I've hit six out of the seven continents. I plan to hit Antarctica soon after this pandemic is done. And I'm also a pretty decent cook, and it's come in quite handy during this pandemic. I want to thank Pact for giving me the opportunity to present myself as well as my company's stories. Thank you, and hope you enjoy this presentation. Hello, my name is Mahesh Narayanan, and I'm the president and CEO of Pactbax. Thank you, Pact, for giving me the opportunity to present here today. While I was doing graduate studies at the University of Pennsylvania, I had the opportunity to work with two brilliant scientists, Dr. Carl June, whose lab was well known for their CAR-T technology, and Dr. Dave Weiner, whose lab is well known for their DNA vaccines. While I was there, I realized that there was significant reliance on viral vectors to deliver our next generation of therapeutics. Viruses were hard to make, hard to deliver, unstable, and most importantly, toxic to patients. DNA had very little of these problems, but we hadn't figured out how to use it as a good delivery mechanism yet. So in 2013, I co-founded Pepvax to develop a DNA-based drug delivery system called SmartMed to develop the next generation of cell therapies, gene therapies, and immunotherapies, either manufactured or engineered directly inside the patients without the help of viruses. Our plasmid has four key components, but the most important is a nuclear localization, which enables our DNA to get into the nucleus up to 90% of the time which is three to five times higher than traditional DNA vaccines, and on par, if not better, than most viral vectors, without any of the side effects. So let me give an example of how this could work in a CAR-T setting. CAR-Ts are engineered T cells that are designed to go after cancer cells. Here, we are able to take the receptors of a CAR, add it to our SmartMed DNA, encapsulate it using a liposome with a hook protein that's specifically designed to bind only to CD8-positive T cells. We take this liposome-encapsulated DNA, deliver it in or near lymph node of the host, and once there, the hook protein is able to tag, tag into the T cells that we want them to target, deliver the DNA inside. And once the DNA is inside the cell, it's able to get to the nucleus and start transcribing and translating the CAR as a transmembrane protein. Now, we've created a CAR directly inside the lymph node of a patient. Once there, it's able to proliferate and spread throughout the body and attack any type of cell that we wanted to target, in this case, cancer cells. We've not only done this in cells, we've actually been able to prove this in animals, where we're able to create multiple types of CAR, CAR T cells, directly inside the lymph node of mice. We've also shown in mice that we were able to get those CAR Ts to actually attack cancer cells that we want them to attack. And in this case, we were able to show a 45% slowdown in tumor growth on MAJ positive triple negative breast cancer cells using an anti MAJ CAR T developed inside the mice. When compared to other technologies, our technology can not only express quite well, we're also much more stable, much more safe. And when it comes to targeting, we overcome that using our liposomal technology. Most importantly, our technology is the most versatile of anything currently existing in commercialization or in development to be used in cell therapies, gene therapies, or immunotherapies. Our market is expected to be about $1.2 billion by 2023, the significant rise in the next three to five years. Our go-to-market strategy has three tiers. The first is collaborations with the universities, we have three well-known universities already on our platform, such as Johns Hopkins and George Mason University. We also have partnerships with startups that are currently licensing our platform and thus generating revenue. And our third tier is licensing with large pharmaceutical or biotechnology companies. We've not yet done this, but we will be able to do once we generate human data. Here is a quick look at our financials. We expect to hit our 2020 revenue projection, and we plan to break even by 2022. 
And by 2024, we expect to sign a very large collaboration or licensing agreement, which will enable a significant revenue at that time. So far, we've raised $750,000 from founders, family, and friends. And in the process of finishing up our 4 million Series A, of which 3.5 million has already been committed from our lead investor. So we're looking for another 500,000 to finish this round. This money will be used towards expanding our collaborations and future partnerships, expanding our IP portfolio, and adding more team members. We also want to use this for future research and development for the next generation of plasmids with more capabilities to address more disease states. I know I've covered a lot of information, so I'm happy to answer any questions during the networking session. Thank you. Terra Labs. Hi, I am Brock Oskarsson, founder and the CEO of Terra Labs. I did my PhD in sperm quality and aging at McGill University in Montreal, Canada. So our technology is actually the first, uh, the roots uh, come from there. Let's talk about infertility today. Often we blame women for this, uh, but men are the problem because today men's sperm quality is 50% lower than their fathers. Male infertility is an alarming problem and the sperm counts are decreasing either with the environmental health risks and aging. And top of these, the current methods are inefficient to select a good sperm. Altogether, the fertility treatments fail 70% of the time because of this. This means infertile couple need to go through five times an IVF treatment, at least, to be able to have a child. There are technologies try to select the sperm and analyze. However, they're expensive, time-consuming, and inefficient. Most importantly, they cannot assess the sperm DNA quality. Sperm with poor DNA quality is very important because it doubles the risk of miscarriage and reduces the live birth rates. For fertility treatments, we need more affordable and better sperm selection technology. That's why we've developed Spermin which is a fully automated sperm analyzer and a sorted device. It is world's first and the only device offering it not only detection, but also separation of the, uh, the good sperm. Our solution uses lab on a chip and a deep learning algorithms to analyze and select the best sperm right on the chip. It separates the best quality sperm um, so the likelihood of pregnancy will increase and live birth rates as well. It is fast, highly accurate, and fully automated. It's easy to use. You don't need a senior embryologist to uh, do this job. And top of that, we can assess the sperm DNA quality. A number of technologies out there doing the male fertility testing, uh, Microptic and Mass Global are the major competitors. However, they only do analysis. They cannot do selection. We combine the analysis and the selection procedures, so we streamline the whole process during in the clinic. It is more accurate and faster compared to the others, and we separate the best sperm cells in 60 minutes. Our customers are fertility clinics, hospitals, and sperm banks. Uh, at the moment, the global fertility market is around $7 billion, and we expect to contract over 300 clinics in five years. We also see a market opportunity in the animal uh, IBM side, uh, which doesn't require certifications and is a loose regulatory pathway that will allow us to um, do a sex selection of the sperm in farm animals. Our revenue model in human uh, side is a, a business to business model. Uh, we have device sales, uh, consumable sales, and reagent sales. On top of that, we also do an annual cloud subscription where they will receive the reporting. With fixed and recurring uh, revenues, each clinic has a $160,000 value, uh, potential revenue value per year. By 2025, 
we expect to reach uh, $55 million in revenues from 300 clinics, starting from Europe in 2020, and then move to United States, uh, and then the China will be the, the third uh, the step of the, uh, the, the market entry. So far, we have LOIs from four major distributors in Europe. We have performed a small uh, a clinical study uh, with a major fertility clinic in Istanbul, Turkey, and signed an NDA with uh, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. I am Brock, I'm the founder and the CEO. We are a well-balanced team with a reproductive health, medical device sales, and a, um, a software and hardware development. Starting from Europe in 2020, we plan to have our uh, the product pipeline, uh, but at the moment, uh, our flagship product, Sperman, uh, will get into the market next year in Europe. Uh, in order to do that, we, we need to receive CE mark and FDA uh, 510k clearance. We are currently uh, fundraising $1 million to commercialize our product. If you're interested in investing in our company, please talk to us. Thank you. Theory on Therapeutics. Hi, I'm Andy Luber, President and Chief Operating Officer of Theory on Therapeutics. Thank you for inviting me to present today. A L- little bit about my background. Um, I've been an antiviral researcher for over 25 years. I ran large clinical trial units in California where I was an investigator of many of the early HIV trials. And we started Virion in 2018 after uh, licensing this technology out of the Worcester Institute in Philadelphia. And so I'm um, excited to share it with you today. Virion Therapeutics is developing novel T-cell-based immunotherapies for cancer and chronic infectious diseases. Uh, these technologies have been licensed from the Wistar Institute and supported with over $25 million in grants. We've licensed two sets of uh, platform technologies, each of which are in the hottest areas of biotechnology today. The first is in the checkpoint inhibitor space. Um, checkpoint inhibitors in 2019 accounted for $22 billion in sales. These antibody therapies work in small numbers of patients for short periods of time and have significant adverse event profiles associated with them. Uh, the second platform we've licensed is a series of multiple chimpanzee adenoviral vectors. This is the technology used, being used by Oxford and AstraZeneca in the COVID vaccine. GlaxoSmithKline, as well as Gristone, also use chimp vectors in their programs. Um, our second generation technologies in each of these areas solves many of the limitations of those therapies, and it allows us to get superior immunogenicity and improve clinical efficacy by really stimulating strong CD8 T cell responses. Our two lead programs, our first is the O200 program for chronic hepatitis B virus infection. Um, This is basically a disease of T cell exhaustion. It's there for any therapy that can restore immune function without the need for antivirals um, will be a very large market, estimated to be about about $3 billion a year. Our second program is our O100 program for human papillomavirus-induced cancers and and precancerous infections. In the U.S. alone, uh, the, the cost of the healthcare system is $2 billion a year. So our key differentiation is how we impact early T-cell activation. On the left, we use our chimpanzee adenoviral vectors to stimulate a CDA T-cell response to a given disease antigen. But at the same time, we uh, stimulate a locally acting checkpoint inhibitor. And this checkpoint inhibitor blocks an inhibitory signal of that T-cell activation. So in essence, we inhibit an inhibitory signal. And this gives us significantly improved CDA T-cell immunogenicity as well as efficacy. You can see that in our programs in the middle. This is our HPV program. On the right, we see less than 5% immunogenicity when our checkpoint's not there. With the checkpoint inhibitor, however, we get best-in-class immunogenicity at 13%. But more importantly, we get improved efficacy. And you can see that in the right in our O200 program. Um, animals that are chronically infected with hepatitis B virus following a single intramuscular injection with our vaccine see sustained declines in the HPV concentrations in the blood that persist for months. This is the first time this has ever been seen with a T-cell immune-based platform. We have a highly experienced and comprehensive management team covering all areas of uh, development necessary to realize the full potential of these assets. Uh, many of our team are serial entrepreneurs, having been involved in the startups of a number of successful companies that have exited. The management to date has $1 million invested into Virion. In addition, we have a world-class board of directors and scientific advisory board. Many of these people were former C-level executives or global franchise heads within Big Pharma or are currently currently internationally recognized academic researchers. If we look at our lead program, our our hepatitis B virus program, 
The field has rapidly shifted to recognition for the need for a T-cell immune-based therapy to be given in combination with other treatments. Our O200 program shows clear differentiation to other T-cells immune-based therapies in development. As such, we're in discussions with a number of different companies, both in U.S. and Asia, to explore combination therapies. Our timelines, we expect to have both programs in the clinic in 2022 with the HBV program leading first. Um, we believe having two uh, disease states in the clinic of high at medical need, along with a first-in-class genetically encoded checkpoint inhibitor, will allow for large step-up in valuation. We base that upon deal comps in the space, and you can see there's a large step up in HBB values going from a preclinical to a phase one asset. And you can see that from the Gilead Hukapa deal, which was a preclinical deal. There was a $10 million upfront, $400 million back ended. However, if you look at Dicerna and Arrowhead, once those assets were in the clinic with a positive readout, those deal terms went up to roughly $200 million upfront with uh, milestones in the billions. We are dual pathing multiple rounds of financing. The first is bridge financing. We're raising five million. We've had about a million raised to date, 500,000 saw circled. The terms are 5% convertible debt at 20% discount to a Series A2. They're preferred and capped at 26 million. We're also dual pathing a Series A2 round now up to 30 million, and we've been in discussions with multiple life science and VCs, which are entering diligence. Those funds will be used to advance both programs through phase one, get the HBV program uh, phase two ready, and allow us to continue to expand out the company. So we believe we've got some unique technology that are clearly differentiated. Um, we have compelling scientific data across multiple disease states. We believe the O200 vaccine has a chance to be something really significant. And we've got world-class advisors, board of directors, and management to help, to help us uh, realize this potential of these assets. So we hope you'll join us. Thank you for your interest, and uh, happy to answer any questions. Life Cuff Technologies. Good morning. My name is Tom Moore, and I'm the CEO of LifeCuff Technologies. And I'm very happy to talk with you today. I am a 12-year Philadelphia resident and a father of three. And at the same time, I'm a newlywed. Nine months ago, I got married. And the good news is, after nine months, she still likes me. My work experience extends from big corporate all the way to startup. My first 23 years of my career was spent at Procter & Gamble, zigzagging up the marketing and then general management ladders. I introduced products like Liquitide, like Perk Plus, the first shampoo plus conditioner in the same formula, uh, Aleve, uh, pain reliever, and on the prescription side, Actinel, one of the leading osteoporosis drugs. In 1996, I left P&G, took over a privately held medical marketing, consulting, and sales force company. Uh, we built it from 30 million in revenue to 130 million in revenue over five years, and then sold it for $246 million, which was a good thing. Uh, after that, I serviced what I sold for a year, and then went off and ran two different publicly traded biotechs, and then did some uh, bioinformatics work and joined the board of a cancer immunotherapy company. And in some missed board count, I got elected chairman and CEO and ran that company for eight years as well. It's called Advaxis. And, uh, and then I thought I'd retire, but I'm not good at that. So I ended up joining uh, LifeCuff Technologies in 2014 and found it very exciting. And I hope I can share that excitement with you. So uh, thank you very much. So LifeCup Technologies is exciting because we've developed a whole new and very effective therapy for healing chronic wounds in a way that I think will address some very big medical needs coming up in the US and worldwide. This unmet need stems from the epidemic of diabetes with almost 30 million sufferers in the US. And of those, 25% will get diabetic foot ulcers, a condition caused by chronic inadequate blood flow to the foot. One and a half million Americans have DFUs right now. And only about 30% of these DFUs will heal with standard care. This results in 150,000 amputations annually in the US. Total DFU treatment costs is a billion dollars a year in the US alone. We think we have a game-changing breakthrough in this area as evidenced by these clinical trial results on a trial two years long that we just completed in Ocean County, New Jersey. We had 42 DFUs come into this study. We treated them all and 31 of the 42 healed in 20 weeks or less. 
And of the balance, the 11 balance, nine decreased significantly in size. A major change in the results from this type of problem. The way we did it was using the home cuff system for DFUs. This system is a blood pressure cuff and an automated, sophisticated, multiply patent controller that delivers tissue conditioning, which is a personalized 40 minute pulsation pattern in blood flow. Five minutes of occlusion and five minutes of open flow repeated a total of four times. When the treatment is done, the device automatically shuts down and transmits both vital signs and compliance data to the physician. It is so simple, it's operated with just one single button, making home therapy easy to achieve. Now, the principles behind how this works is based on the concept of healing wounds from the inside out instead of the outside in, which is the way they're normally treated. And that's important because the issue isn't from the outside. The issue is the underlying weakness of the tissue that, in fact, causes chronic wounds. Our pulsing circulation releases a powerful anti-inflammatory compounds throughout the body, addressing a key reason for the problems with the chronic ulcers. But it also changes the cellular metabolism of every cell in the body so oxygen can be used more efficiently to heal. Competitive advanced approaches are really just two. A application of negative pressure at the site, which achieves 46% healing, which isn't bad, but at a cost of 17,000. The other approach is to take reprocessed placental tissue. Yes, I said placental tissue and apply it. There you get 62% healing, mommy knows best, but at a cost of $24,000. Our approach, 74% healing at a cost of only $3,000. The benefits therefore are pretty broad. Patients love the higher healing rates, but they also like being treated at home. Dragging yourself to doctor's office is no fun. Prescribing physicians like it because not only do they get reimbursed for prescribing, but they also get reimbursed for reviewing the, the data that comes in three times a week as patients conduct their own therapy. They also get to track compliance, which is a big issue with DFU patients. And of course, they get better outcomes. Of course, it's the payers who really clean up because this is dramatically lower cost for better results compared to competing therapies and their major additional savings in having fewer amputations at a cost of $60,000 each. The market is huge. One and a half million DFUs in the US times $3,000 says there's a potential of four and a half billion dollars and close to $40 billion worldwide. So our next steps are to begin our pivotal FDA approval study in the fourth quarter of this year, 105 patients, 12 months long, and then a second study of 70 patients, again in the fourth quarter of this year, to test out a potential new indication of pressure ulcers. This is being done in a cooperative research agreement with the Veterans Administration. And then third, a 40 patient, eight month study with Des Moines University to do some special advanced analysis of how our approach works. Our aim is to get FDA 510K de novo approval, which would allow us to commence marketing in the first quarter of 2022. We're also raising 7 million for completing this clinical trial approach. Um, we'll raise an additional 4 million uh, next year to enable commercialization. So far, we've brought in over $1.6 million from friends, family, and founders. We have an excellent management team with over 60 years experience in medical devices. Boris Lashinsky, a certified genius, was the lead engineer for artificial organs at, in the Soviet Union, but also the vice president of technology at Datascope. He holds over 70 patents. Ava Branovich has worked in several companies and is a Cracker Jack, Cracker Jack engineer. Our scientific advisor board is headed by David G. Armstrong at USC, arguably the number one key opinion leader in the treatment of diabetic foot ulcers worldwide, and Karen Prizzleclank, who is the person who first discovered our tissue conditioning technology back in the 1990s. We have nine issued patents and 11 foreign patents issued or filed. Uh, our, Jap our Japan patent got issued last week, so we're very excited about that. 
Our key patent was issued on uh, Halloween in 2017, so it's overall a very young patent portfolio. We have been blessed with a terrific team of support partners, some of the best in the business, and we are very grateful uh, for that. Our projections are to, uh, to build business rapidly beginning in 2022, up to 38 million in revenue in 2024. Before anyone whispers hockey stick, that 38 million represents less than 1%, 1% of the US DFU market. So we think it's very achievable. We uh, sell this device for 3,000. It costs us $160 to make. There's a little bit of margin in that for us. And um, the home usage, of course, is right up in step with the latest changes going on because of COVID-19. I hope I've cited some interest. Thank you very much. Solution Medical. Hi, everyone. My name is Julie Anthony, and I'm the founder and CEO of Solution Medical a drug delivery company developing more user-friendly delivery systems for reconstitutable drugs. I'm tuning in today from the Finger Lakes in upstate New York, where I've grown up spending my summers. However, I was born at Jefferson Hospital in Philadelphia, the hospital where doctors saved my life as an infant and the university from which I received my master's degree. As you will hear in our upcoming pitch, Creating Solution Medical is more than merely wanting to meet unmet needs in the reconstitutable drug delivery space. It's personal. My drive comes from wanting to empower people with chronic and rare diseases, including my brother and myself. My passion stems from the belief that accessible healthcare is achievable through patient-centric design. And every day I work on solution, it's because quite simply, my life and my brother's life depends on its success. Thank you for listening, and I hope to have the opportunity to speak with you further. I'm here talking with you today because my brother and I have fought off death multiple times throughout our lives. Most recently, my brother passed out on his way to a restaurant bathroom, and no one who saw him was able to help. That's because his life-saving medication requires 15 steps and multiple minutes to mix and administer. Now, I know many of you watching today personally carry an EpiPen, or maybe you have a loved one who carries an EpiPen. Sufferers of adrenal insufficiency do not have that luxury. The chemical nature of the medication needed during a crisis does not allow for it to be stored in a solution-stable form in an EpiPen-like device. Luckily for my family, my younger brother was in the restaurant that evening when my brother passed out in the bathroom and was able to administer him his life-saving medication. The same cannot be said, however, for the nearly 1 million individuals at risk for an adrenal crisis in the United States and Europe. We all have to worry, including my brother and myself, that if we have a crisis, someone will be able to perform a veritable chemistry experiment to save our life. At Solution Medical, we are solving this problem by providing adrenal insufficient sufferers and their caregivers a safe, reliable, and easy way to deliver urgently needed medication. Solution Medical is creating the EpiPen for adrenal crises. Unlike other solutions, our patent-pending combination drug delivery products provides one-step medication mixing that is 20 times faster than the current standard of care. Our product also automatically removes air and can be activated in any orientation. With our simpler, faster, and safer solution, we aim to improve user experience and increase adherence, improve outcomes and decrease healthcare burden, and most importantly, save lives. To get to market, we plan to initially target Pfizer injectables because they dominate the adrenal disease space and their packaging patents are approaching expiration. Beyond Pfizer, many generic pharma companies have already expressed interest in our technology. And in fact, we've already been approached regarding potential licensing opportunities. Our current plan is to acquire the drug from a generic supplier, fill and finish our device through contract manufacturing, and distribute or sell devices through a strategic partner. This pathway provides the most complete solution with the highest investor returns, but does not preclude licensing and acquisition deals occurring throughout our commercialization process. The drugs going into our Class II device are off patent and well understood by manufacturers and the FDA, allowing us to pursue an accelerated regulatory pathway. The $320 million adrenal disease market is just the beginning. Worldwide healthcare is trending towards more at-home treatments, and pharma companies are seeking ways to deliver high-volume drugs for self-treatment in a timely manner. 
With our delivery system, we intend to one, protect existing pharma revenue streams, second, provide faster, less expensive pathways to market, and third, offer the prospect of intellectual property extensions for existing drugs that are either off patent or nearing patent expiration. Possible markets include in vitro fertilization therapies, monoclonal antibody treatments, and antipsychotic drugs. Our core team of patients, that's me, startup veterans, and user experience experts is backed by clinical, regulatory, and strategic advisors from pharmaceutical companies, including the president of Bayer Pharma, and human-centered design gurus, including Dennis Boyle, one of the founders of IDEO, a world-renowned medical design firm. Last but not least, Johnson & Johnson recently indicated their support of our work by welcoming Solution into its prestigious JLabs family. To take the next step, we are raising $2 million to optimize our patent pending products, continue further into regulatory work, and show proof of concept manufacturing with aseptic fill and finish lines all over the next 18 months. I'll leave you with one last thought. The time it has taken for this pitch is still less time than it takes most people to mix and prepare the rescue medication my brother and I both need. My name is Julia Anthony, and I'm the CEO and founder of Solution Medical. I invite you to, enjoy, to join Solution and our growing cohort of partners. With your investment, we can save lives because together we are the solution. Thank you very much. Vestec. Hi. Uh, my name is Joe Rafferty. I'm the CEO of uh, Vestec Incorporated, a Westchester, Pennsylvania based medical device early stage startup. Um, my wife of 40 years and our four adult children are uh, proud uh, Pennsylvanians. Uh, we're, uh, we've always been uh, from the suburbs of Philadelphia. Uh, corporate America has moved me around quite a bit, but our home base has always been Philly. I'm a proud graduate of the Temple University. My wife's a Thomas Jefferson person. Uh, we've got some Penn Staters, Temple lawyers, uh, Cal Berkeley PhD, and the, the kids tease about our family culture of uh, Kaizen and, and overachievement. And frankly, it's that culture of, uh, of constant improvement and, and overachieving that we're hoping to bring to Vestec Incorporated. Uh, so what is Vestec? Um, Vestec is a technology that I've, I've learned over the years that if I ask uh, physicians what's keeping them up at night, what are they trying to fix, accomplish, avoid, they'll tell you. Um, we brought them um, Vestec, um, and uh, these physicians have told us that it's a catheter that they would use um, for every procedure, that they would, it would become the standard of care for endovascular repair. Uh, you may recognize Bill Gray as the director of the cardiovascular service line for uh, all of mainline health. And Bill says, frankly, why would I not use Vestec for every patient? Um, it's it's that, uh, that valuable resource. What patients would get Vestec? Um, if a family member or a friend were diagnosed with an aortic aneurysm, they have two therapeutic options. One is a painful, expensive, um, open surgical repair. It is durable. Um, but there's about a 20% chance that the patient may not get off the table. Uh, the alternative is what's called an endovascular repair, or EVAR, where um, about 80% of physicians and, and patients are selecting this, so it's not going away. It's only going to continue to grow. Um, where a physician creates two small holes in the arteries in the groin and inserts a covered stent graft to exclude the aneurysm sac there. By excluding the sac, it shrinks. And, and lots of good things happen. The challenge is, and if you'll see up here at the, the neck, the proximal neck, uh, there's really only a little bit of friction holding that graft in place. Well, what happens when that friction is lost? At six months, the graft's in place. At 12 months, it's already fallen down below L2, and, and that graft is leaking. That aorta is leaking. It could rupture, and by uh, 24 months, this graft has completely collapsed and needs to be repaired and replaced. What's the solution? Uh, endo anchors. Uh, endo anchors um, seal that proximal portion of the graft to the aorta, and it promotes sac regression. Sac regression increases survival, patient survival, and it decreases cardiac events, things like heart attacks. So what's our solution? Uh, the Vestec catheter sutures these endovascular uh, grafts to the aorta, um, helping patients live longer, but also it eliminates migration and leaks, expensive repairs, and mortality. 
We have working prototypes. Physicians tell us they're fast, safe, secure. They eliminate leaks. We've got five different catheters. So this is not a one-trick pony. It is a platform technology. This is what it looks like. Um, inside the graft, that's a Dacron graft. That is the outside. The sutures go through the adventitia, the strongest portion. Inside a Medtronic graft, you can see the Dacron graft. And again, outside the adventitia, holding that graft in place. We've tested 400 million cycles, no tearing, elongation, or migration. We've got a team that knows how to build products and bring them to market. We've got regulatory, technical operations, and, and a medical consultant. We've got an advisory board that is on every major meeting dais. They're on the podium, and they're happy to talk about the benefits of Vestec, and they're prepared to do our clinical trials. We've got one competitor, and that is the Medtronic Helifix. Medtronic bought Aptis for $110 million back in 2015. Physicians tell us we have a better mousetrap. We're faster, safer, stronger, um, and, uh, and more, more precise suture placement. But most importantly, we improve that proximal seal. There are approximately 20 different companies that have endovascular sales forces. We would tuck nicely into their sales bag. We've got a issued patents, and we are filing provisional patents to expand our runway. We're targeting $1.3 billion in incremental revenue by 2028. Our indications are for initial implants and, and repair procedures. We've got a 510K clinical pathway. There are existing DRGs and CPT codes for hospital and physician reimbursement. We'll use this money to complete first in man by Q1 2022. Uh, physicians tell us that we've got the right product. The peer reviewed literature tells us from a market timing standpoint, we're on track. And we've got the know-how to bring these devices to market. We've got the right team. And now we're looking for the right investors. I appreciate your time and look forward to the opportunity to work with you in the future. Thank you. Thanks to all our great presenters today. As you can see, the excitement is continuing to build on the path to the lion's den. Please join us on September 24th to see which companies are selected. Well, once again, thank you, Dave and EY. The lion's den is getting closer, and I am excited to see who makes it to the finals. It is gonna be a hard decision. Again, that grand finale, the lion's den, is on September 24th from 10 to 11.30 a.m. You're not gonna wanna miss it. It's also now time to head to the Remo Room. If you didn't get the chance to do so during the first week of our programming, please do so now. It's an incredible room where you'll be able to network with our sponsors, with other participants, or with our featured companies that just pitched. You can access the Remo Room via the email invite that you received or on your desk, desktop or mobile capital conference app. Thank you.